Version 24.2.1 is now available and it's full of a bunch of cool new updates. The first one is support for color fonts. Now, before this update, I was like, what the heck is a color font? But apparently it's a thing. There are fonts that come built in with their own color expressions, shape, and styles. With your Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, you can get some free color fonts from Adobe Fonts, for example, Gilbert, but you can also get color fonts from other third-party sites like Envato Elements. On Envato Elements, you can go to fonts, and if you just search color fonts, you can download a bunch of these. They're just .otf files. And inside of your font book, or if you use a Windows inside of your font folder, regular fonts, they just look like this, like black standard font, right? But a color font, for example, like this one, displays its built-in color. So if we go into Premiere Pro, I have this particle background layer already inside of my timeline. And let's go to the type tool and let's type in hydro font. And let's select the font. Let's go to essential graphics. Let's center align it, of course, into frame. And right now it's just using Montserrat. But let's go to text and let's type in hydro man. And this is one of the fonts I downloaded from Envato Elements. And now look at that. It has this nice icy look to it. So this is great because you have this new starting point with this nice style that you can then add animation to. So I've downloaded a bunch of these different color fonts just to show you. We have Able One, we have Cookies, we have the Shocker color font, the Moon, which I really like, the Future, Cheese, Chains, and Grass, and there's a whole bunch more. So color fonts work natively in Premiere Pro version 24.2.1 and above now, but there's no support for it yet inside of After Effects. So if you have any After Effects made Mogerts, the fonts will not work. If we select this, it just displays as white. There's no color at all, but you can add your own animation to the color fonts inside of Premiere Pro. For example, I have a few elastic text animation presets right over here. Let's drag and drop this preset on top of the color font. Notice how the background comes with it. Well, what we need to do is nest it. So let's lasso and select both these clips, nest, and there's the Hydra font with our text animation. The next update is support for full color emojis on Apple systems. I'm not 100% sure if it's available yet for Windows at the time that I'm making this video, but I hope it will be available soon. For example, if I go to the type tool and I just click on the program monitor, if you go up to edit, go down to emojis and symbols, it will pop open the emoji window. You can edit these emojis just going to the essential graphics panel so we can go ahead and center align this. These aren't animated, right? But for example, if I wanted to apply that same text preset that I applied on this one, I can just copy this and paste it on top of our emoji file here and now it's animated. So while this isn't like a huge update because emojis should have been supported already, it's good to know that it's here. Next up, Enhanced Speech is now inside of the main build of Premiere Pro. It is the same technology behind Adobe Podcast as now inside of Essential Sound, which is just fantastic. So let me show you a demo here using a sample clip where I didn't have my main microphone on. It was just the on-camera microphone. So let's play this back. So here we're going to post tutorials on how to use our toolkit. It's very quiet. So what we can do first of all is just select this clip, go to a central sound, select dialogue, and let's see how it performs without normalizing our audio first, which means bringing up the audio level so it's a little bit higher. So let's go ahead and click on enhanced speech and let's see the results. So here we're going to post tutorials on how to use our toolkit. And so you can hear it just sounds a bit too robotic -y, right? And that's because it's struggling with the low volume. What we can do first of all is normalize the audio. So press G on your keyboard to bring up audio gain and we want to normalize the max peak to zero and press OK. So here we're going to post tutorials on how to use our toolkit. And you can hear that the audio doesn't sound that great, but it's a lot louder. So there's more information for enhanced speech to work with. But before we go ahead and use that, we first need to render and replace our audio. So press Command L or Control L to delink it. And then we can right click on the audio clip and render and replace. And that just basically burns in the gain that we just did. And now we can go to dialogue and go to enhance. And now it's it's working. 
it is doing its work. So this is what it sounded like without it. So here we're going to post tutorials on how to use And this is with. So here we're going to post tutorials on how to use Just gets rid of that noise, right? But let's increase it a little bit more. So here we're going to post tutorials on how to use our toolkit. Just in the beginning, it sounds a little robotic-y. It just gives more vocal presence to my voice, right? So you can play around with this mix amount until you achieve the balance and quality that you're looking for. Again, this should only be used in certain circumstances where the audio just is not salvageable, you cannot re-record, and you just need to make it sound better. So there are more updates, of course, that we're going to talk about, but first, hello, how are you, friend? Welcome to Premiere Gal. You probably are a Premiere Pro user if you're here watching these update videos, but in addition to doing these types of update videos, we also do classic editing tutorials. We talk about new innovations in AI. Basically, everything we talk about here is just to improve your knowledge when it comes to post-production in general. Also, my team and I, we use Envato Elements a lot to find funny b-roll shots to include in our videos, sound effects, and some music as well. They really have everything. I've been an Envato Elements partner and supporter for many years now, so they reached out and they sponsored today's video. So thank you, Elements, for supporting this channel for so many years. And one thing that's new that's great They've really made it easy to search and find elements on Envato Elements because they just introduced their new AI search. So if you click on start searching with AI, you can basically tell it what you're looking for and it will find those assets for you. I'm making a commercial promoting tennis and I need b-roll shots and a pumping soundtrack to edit to. All right, as we scroll down, we can see that there's stock video clips related to tennis that we can start downloading. Another really great benefit of Involved Elements is you can have unlimited downloads. You're not restricted to pay per asset. And then down here, you can find the music tracks too. A little bit too techno-y. I like this one. So you can just click download and that's it. And the new AI search just saves you a ton of time. It's like going on a hike to the peak, but you don't have to do the hike. You're just there at the peak already and you're just downloading the assets so much faster. And to add the cherry on top, Envato now has a panel for Premiere Pro that also has the AI search. So inside of Premiere Pro, you can open up the Envato extension, which is free to download. You just have to connect your subscription. And for example, here in the timeline, I have this tennis shot. I can go over here to sound effects and you can give permission for the AI to take screenshots of the current frame of your timeline and it will search for sound effects based on this frame. And look, here's an example, a tennis racket whoosh, net whoosh. You can see tennis racket hit. This is great. Everything related to a court is coming up here. I'm sure if I had a close up of a tennis ball, it would also have like a ball bounce, for example. All right, so you can just go here and, you know, download a few sound effects and it appears directly in your project panel and you can drag and drop it directly in your timeline so you have sound effects for your scene. The same works for the music and the video as well. But seriously, without all the stock footage and sound effects we get from Elements, we wouldn't be able to do all the funny edits that we do here on the channel. And if you wanna try it out, Envato Elements set you up with a great discount for your first month. So you can use my link in my description to sign up and you can download as much as you want to try out in your projects. All right, now let's get it back on to the 24.2.1 updates. If you post a TikTok now inside of this Premiere Pro build, you can go to export, and over here on the left, you can now enable TikTok, direct publishing, and Adobe works closely with TikTok to make sure that if you publish from Premiere Pro, you would still get the same results as if you published directly in app. So of course, just like before, you can save the file directly to a location on your drive. You can sign in now to your TikTok account. You can choose to have it be a post or a draft. You can also write in your caption here, on the beach, hashtag Venice, or as many hashtags as you want. And then you can choose your cover image. So you can scrub to a location and use current frame if you want, and this will update. I do wish though, if I clicked on this and scrubbed, 
that this would change the frame for me, just a little feedback to the Premiere Pro team, then you can choose to have it be private. But the whole idea is that you can publish live to TikTok and you don't have to worry about any issues. Also be sure to uh, enable comments if you want, duet or stitch. And you can also delete the file locally after the export if you want. If you regularly edit in Premiere Pro and publish to TikTok, this is a great update for you. Next is proxies. So if you're not sure what a proxy is, proxy is essentially a duplicate copy of your original footage, but in a smaller form. So people use proxies to make your editing more smooth when you're editing with high resolution footage. So the way that proxies work in Premiere Pro has gotten a bit of a facelift. So if you want Premiere Pro to automatically generate proxies for you, when you import your footage, you need to go up to File, Project Settings, Ingest Settings. And from here, you can have an action when you import footage to always have it create proxies. And now instead of it being this weird kind of wonky selection of different ingestion presets, which was just a little confusing, they improved it so it's now based on the resolution frame size. So you always want it to be smaller because that's the whole point. So quarter is good. And then from here, we want to choose ProRes QuickTime because it's just buttery smooth playback. You want it to be saved in the same as your project, wherever that is. So that's all good, but you can always choose a custom location if you want and then press OK. So I've downloaded some 4K files from Envato Elements just as an example. So let's go ahead and drag this folder in here. And now you can see the resolution, a UHD 4K. And if we scroll over, to the right, you'll see that there's a proxy column, offline, 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 offline. And you will see that these will become attached in just a moment. Oh, there's one attach. And that's because when we import, Adobe Media Encoder automatically opened up and started creating proxies of these video files. And over here, attached will become present each time a proxy is finished. So let me go ahead and right click on one of these clips and create a new sequence from the clip. And you can see that we have this little icon here. That means that the proxy is turned on. If this is turned off, toggle proxies, then the proxy is not enabled. So right now, if we're playing back, this is the proxy working here. Of course, you can always go over here and you can, you know, right click on this and go to proxy and detach the proxy at any time. If you guys are Sony users, you're gonna be excited about this. Now, Sony Verona was a very expensive commercial camera, but if you're a video editor, you need to be comfortable with many different types of formats. Sony Verona is now supported inside of Premiere Pro and Sony Verona encodes its ginormous high quality files in a X OCN file type. That in itself, that file, well, it's not a file type, it's kind of an encoding format. It's wrapped in a .mxf format, which you're probably familiar with. But the encoding itself essentially allows these big files to be compressed while still maintaining high quality. So what I've done is from the Sony site, I've downloaded the sample video clip here. It's a .mxf file. And if I right click on this and go to properties, you can see that the file itself is an XOCN file type, but it's wrapped as an MXF. If I scroll through the columns, you can see that it's about a 6K file. So it's pretty big. So if I right click on this and create a new sequence from the clip, you can see when we play this back, It plays back, but there's a few dropped frames. It's a little bit jittery. If we bring this down to like a quarter, it's better. Pretty smooth, right? You'll also notice it's in a log color space. It's a little bit, you know, muted. So if we go to effect controls, you'll see when we go to source that it actually kind of behaves like red raw. It still maintains a lot of raw color data in this XOCN format. So we can go in here to this color space and we can change it from log to rec 709 and bam, we didn't need to apply a conversion LUT. It has that data inside of the file itself, just like with other raw formats. And from here, we can do some further color grading from Lumetri Color if you wanted to. 
But one thing to remember, because this file size is big, this is probably a good opportunity to use proxy, right? But this was already imported before I changed my ingest settings. So what you can do is you can actually right click on this clip and go to proxy and create proxies just from this clip. Let's do quarter pro res next to original media. Okay. And now it's starting to create the proxy. So you can scroll over here to see if the proxy is attached or not, because right now, Adobe Media Encoder is encoding this file. So we now have our attached proxy to this individual clip and we're good to go. Make sure to account for the proxy creation when you're working with large files like Sony Barono and you don't have to worry about, you know, just sitting here and waiting for the proxies to get done before you get into the nitty gritty of editing. So yeah, those are all of the updates. If you like this style of video where I kind of go in depth to the updates and explain different things, be sure to leave a comment below. That's all for today's video. Thank you so much for watching. And as always, keep creating better video with Gap. See you next time. Bye. Ooh.